Now, uh, I'm going to answer a few questions here. First question I will say again, what is grace? What is the grace of God? The grace of God is the undeserved blessings of God. It includes, He created us, He created the world, He sent Jesus Christ to die for us, He sent the Holy Spirit to move in our heart, to work in our heart, to draw us to Him, and He rewarded us, and He blessed us, He created heaven. All these are the grace of God, the blessings of God. It came from the love of God, okay? And the law of God are the requirement of God that He wants us to obey, to love God, to love people, and to preach the gospel, and baptize them in the name of the name, name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything Jesus has taught us. So all the commandments in the Bible are the law. And we need both the grace and the law of God. The love of God, the grace of God, and the law of God. Now the love and the grace are different. Love is his, God's love in his heart. He loves us. Grace is his love in action. His love in action to bless us. Okay. Now, I want to answer this question about um, does God bless us when we don't obey Him? I want to say this. God loves us even when we don't obey Him. God loves Jerusalem. Even when Jerusalem has killed the prophets that were sent to Him, that God continues to love them. So that's love. The blessings, the general blessings God still, still gives to all people. All people have the sun and the rain and the soil and the food. These are blessings of God. God still sent blessings to them. God still blessed them to move in the heart to draw them to God. God still moved in the heart. But God's blessing as far as peace, love, joy, patience, kindness, the presence of God do not come to these people. Because these people block, they block the blessings of God. So God still loves them, but they don't get the blessings in spiritual areas. They don't get the spiritual blessings. But God still move in the heart so that they will open the heart and then they receive these blessings. How about Christians? They love God to a certain extent. They pray to God to a certain extent. But many things they don't obey. What will happen? You see, notice many Christians have fights in the family. They are unhappy. They don't have joy. They don't have strength. But they still believe in Jesus. They still repent. But they have many many of these things that block their life, many sins, many areas that they didn't obey. Every area we didn't obey God, there is a consequence. When we reap from the flesh, when we sow from the flesh, we we'll reap destruction. For instance, if you get angry and fight with your husband and wife, what will happen? It will destroy your family, your marriage. If you fight with your family or church members, what will happen? You destroy your ministry. Every sin, even in your heart, when we don't like someone, it will affect our peace, take away our peace, take away our relationship with God, take away our relationship with people. So if some people, they serve God in church, but they don't like certain people, they don't like this person, he doesn't love God, I don't like him. Now God doesn't teach us to do that. God teaches us to love even the sinners, to have compassion on them. But we understand the situation, but we still care about them and love them. But if we dislike them and hate them, what happens is, it will block our relationship with God. We will suffer. Every sin, we will suffer. In John chapter 5, verse 14, you can write this down, very important. John chapter 5, verse 14. There was a man who was sick for 38 years, and he could not walk. And then Jesus went to that man and healed that man. And then he said in John 5, 14, Do not sin anymore, lest the worst thing will happen to you. Lest the worst thing will happen to you. When people don't obey God, there is always some bad consequence. Because it will block the blessings of God 
For instance, if we don't pray, can you have joy? No. Now, if you pray a little bit, five minutes a day, one minute a day, you get some strength, but not much, and you suffer. Is that true? When we don't obey God totally, we suffer. When we dislike someone, we hate someone, we don't forgive someone, we can reap destruction. The worst destruction is God will not forgive us. And the less serious is it will affect our relationship with this person and with God and with ourselves. So every sin has a consequence. So will they lose the blessings of God? Yes, they will. But sometimes they lose part of the blessings. But can people say, I just sinned a little bit and I have obeyed God in other areas and uh, I still get the blessings. Let me tell you, it is not wise to sin against God. Can you say it with me? It is not wise to sin against God. It is not wise to commit any single sin. Say it together. It is not wise to commit any single sin. If we commit any single sin, it's going to destroy our life. Let me ask you, can you think of one sin that has no bad consequence? Can you think of one sin that has no bad consequence? Now some guys, some young guys, they always ask, look for girls. They find a girl and they want to have sex and they say, I get everything I get, I have sex, and then I don't have to marry her. You know, some guys are like that. So teach your girls, don't trust any guy that says that I love you. When they say I love you, they just mean I want you. I want to have sex with you. And then after that, I'll discard you. It doesn't mean they really love you. But this guy, does he gain a lot? If he just have sex with many women and don't marry them, does he gain? He might have some happiness. But God is not happy with him. And God will not bless his life. And he can have eternal damnation. And also even if he repent, even when we repent, there is a consequence of each sin. Do you believe this? Yes. If you break your marriage, is there a consequence? Are there consequences? It will destroy your marriage and destroy your life and destroy your ministry. So it's wise not to sin. But if you have sinned already, then we say, God, forgive me. And I truly repent. I want to obey you totally. Then God give you new chances. But the new chances are not as good as the chances that you had if you did not sin in the first place. If when we start, when we believe, when we begin to believe in Jesus and we obey God all the way and really love God all the time, we receive blessings in our whole lifetime and it's never too late. But the later it is, the worse it is. Because when you have destroyed a relationship with so many people, so many people, they yell at other people, they don't like people, they don't like the pastor, they don't like the church. This has wreaked this, this will bring the destruction to his whole life. And then if he repents, he can get something back, but not everything. Do you understand this? Sin has consequence. But I don't motivate people by just saying sin has consequence. I motivate people by saying, God knows your sin. God cares about you. God wants to bless you. And God is the only one who can bless you, not the girls, not the rich men. They cannot really bless you, but God can bless your whole lifetime. And if you trust in God and obey Him, He will pour blessings into your life. And your life will be different, and your life will go higher and higher. Do you want, do you believe God is the one who is in control of everything? Do you believe? Yes. I totally believe God is in control of everything. Can we run away from God's eyes? But many Christians think they can. They think, I would do something in secret. I would steal some church money. Is it safe to steal money from the church? He can lose salvation. It is terrible. It is terrible. If you do something intentionally against God, it is terrible. So we must not sin against God. We sin against God.
God is the one who has all the blessings in His hand and He knows our heart. And that is why some people will reap, you know, straw and, and, uh, and hay. But some people will reap gold and silver and precious stone. Because many people do not have a heart to honor God. I honor God a lot. I really love God and I trust in God. But my motivation is not the punishment. It's not saying God will punish me so I don't want to be punished. But I say, God is the one who loves us so much. He has so many blessings. There is no one like Him. There is none like Him. Is it true? Yes. There is no one like Him. His creation is so beautiful. The work of the Holy Spirit is so wonderful. The salvation of Jesus is so wonderful. Heaven is so wonderful. Do we want all these blessings? Yes. yes. So I know God is wonderful. So I hold on to God all the time. And I hold on to His grace. So every day I wake up, I say, God loves me. I'm very happy. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Everything I do for God, God is happy. And I'm happy to serve God. That way, I'm always positive. I'm always motivated. The last motivation, if people don't obey, is you don't obey God, you can lose salvation. That is the last motivation. But do we want to be just motivated by the punishment of God? No. We want to be motivated by the love of God. Okay? Now the other question is, how about you teach them that people don't obey? That will happen all the time. <laughs> because people just think they are wiser than God. Many people think they're wiser than God. They think they're more powerful than God. They think they can cheat God. They think judgment is too far away. There's still a long way. I will sin all I want now. In the last 10 years, I'll repent and obey God. That is the foolish, most foolish thing to do. God knows our heart. Now God knows our heart here and now. God knows our heart. If you really want to serve God, you don't serve God for money. You don't serve God for your benefit, but you serve God because God is so good. He's so wonderful. He has blessed us. And then you want to serve God from your heart. God sees your heart and God will bless you. Amen. But it's true that many Christians have many, uh, what do you call that, um, many bondage, many um, I forgot the word, the holes, you know, that, like the holes in the city, the, what do you call that word? No, it's, it's the, you know, the, like the hole in our life that Satan can attack. That we all have areas that Satan can attack. But if we can take care of that, now the reason why some people really want to serve God, but they have some areas that gave Satan a foothold. Because of their emotions, they are unhappy every day, they worry, they doubt, they are angry, they dislike people. That way, they have all these footholds to Satan. And what happened is, this will bring destruction. At the same time, they have blessings. But if we take care of all these problems, now these few days I'm going to talk about that, how to take care of emotions, negative emotions, negative thinking, sins, negative lifestyle, all this, how can we take care of all this? So that our whole life doesn't have any foothold to the devil. To the devil. If we have any foothold, we repent and turn away from those sins. I intentionally Turn away from any single sin. I don't want any single sin to take away the blessings of God. Okay, now I come back to that question. How about if some Christians, you teach and they don't obey, they might have the reasons, they think they are more powerful than God, they are more smarter than God, they can outsmart God, but these are all foolish. But we don't say that. But we say this. If you have a father who really loves you and cares about you and have all kinds of good things for you, but you dislike your father, will you get these blessings? If you dislike your father, you won't get the blessings. So, if you dislike God who can give you all these blessings, 
what will happen is you will suffer. You will suffer. Look at your life. You suffer in your marriage, in your work, in your health, in your inner life. All this you suffer. Do you want to continue to suffer? Do you want to have peace and joy and love? Like the people who love God. If you want this, then you obey God and serve God. And God will pour blessings upon you more and more and more. And Amen. first God will give you peace and joy. Do you want the peace and joy? When you have the peace and joy, you have the strength from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now have I answered the questions? Yes. Please speak loud and come forward. Take a mic. And please ask the questions quickly because uh, we are live. Come, come, come. We are live on uh, Facebook right now. Okay? Please speak loudly. And if you don't mind, you can come forward to speak loudly. Yes. Or oh, where if you are sure than all the laws. You are sure than all the laws. You have what? Excuse showing me. Again. Excuse me. Yeah. You are showing or love. You are showing all the laws. You are showing the law to them. Showing. Yeah, teaching. Today. Teaching. teaching. Love. Okay. But yet they stay. They don't think of what we do as the pastors. We okay. give encouragement. They don't obey. They don't obey. Okay. Now, it, oh, it <laughs> put down the mic, please. Now, there are some people like that. Whatever you teach them, they don't obey. Then, we start from whatever they have. If they still believe in Jesus, we ask them, have you experienced any peace and joy and strength? If you have, do you want more? And also in your life, have you suffered in some way because of these sins? When you fight with your family member, do you have bad consequences? If you fight with God, are there bad consequences? Do you want to take care of these problem, problematic areas in your life? So we counsel them, help them. But some people just disobey. And we just, we just keep teaching. It's, it's like saying, you know, this is a source of life. He, God is a source of life and blessings and, and strength and provision and the most wonderful plan. Do you want that? And then also, another way to motivate them by people sharing. When people obey God and, sh and you know, when people have problems and then they follow God and experience God, we pray for them, they experience the Holy Spirit and they are healed and then we ask them to share. And to encourage our people, do you want to be like them? That their life can be healed and their life is changed. So good examples as well as bad examples can motivate them. So whatever way, we can motivate by the grace but also motivate by the law. If we don't obey, the consequence is eternal punishment. Are you ready for that? And some people think they commit some sin, they will not lose salvation. Now, we never know. We are saved by grace through faith. We are saved by grace through faith, not by good works. But faith always has fruits. Faith always has fruits. We are not saved by the fruits. We are not saved by action. We are saved when we trust in Jesus as our Savior. But when we are saved, we have these six fruits. Okay? First, continue to repent. Real Christians will feel sorry for their sins, right? Real Christians will continue to repent and turn away from the sin. Number two, continue trusting God. They will continue to say, God, please forgive my sin. God, please bless me. I trust in you. And these are related to salvation. And then two related to relationship. They will live, abide in the vine, as the branch will abide in the vine. So we have this close relationship with God. And if anyone is not in the, in the vine, what happens is, it's like a branch that is cast out in the outside and is thrown into fire. So if people don't pray, they can lose salvation. And then number four, love God. Yes, sir. Number three is the relationship with God. The fruit is the relationship with God. Number four is the loving God. Because the greatest commandment is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 it says that, Cursed is he who does not love the Lord. Cursed is he who does not love the Lord. So if someone doesn't love the Lord, he can bring curses to himself. 
Now we are not saved by loving God. But if people don't love God and they believe in Jesus, they just want salvation. But they hate God. They don't love God. That is a danger they could lose salvation. And number five and six are action. Number five is obey. Obey God. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. You please write this down. Matthew 7, verses 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only he who obeys the will of my Father who is in heaven. And on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we have preached in your name. We have cast out demons. We have performed miracles in your name. But then the Lord will say to them, Surely I say to you, You wicked man, I don't know you. Because they don't obey. There are some people who cast out demons. They even serve in a church. Let me tell you. I know a pastor. A long time ago. Now I'm not angry with the pastor. But I'm telling his story. And I really doubt his motives. He knows that I have a girl in my church, he knows that. But he goes to his her home every day to teach her English. And this girl, let me, you know, one time she did not, you know, uh, she just mentioned that, and I asked her, is this pastor coming to your home every day to teach you English? She said, yes. And she said, she's like a father to me. So I called up the pastor. I said, pastor, do you know that this girl is going to my church? She said, he said, yes. I'm just blessing her. I'm just loving her without condition. I don't. I won't ask her to go to my church. But finally, the girl left my church and went to his church. And then I, I asked the girl, "What did the pastor do to you?" He said, "She said, well, he drove me home." And I asked her, "What did she, what did he do when he drove you home?" He hugged me. She said, "He hugged me." I said, do you see something wrong with that? Is his intention is to love God or to steal a member from another church? Now, for me, it doesn't matter because God will give back to me. But this pastor has the intention to steal people from other churches and also to hug this girl. Now, I don't know what else he did. But what happened is, after this girl left the church, the people on Facebook noticed this girl start to have very heavy makeup. The whole life is changed. What kind of life does this pastor have? Now this pastor might think he can escape God's eyes. The thing is, he cannot. Now I pray that, I pray that he will repent of his sins and do not go to hell because of that. Some pastor will think, I just try to get anyone I can from other churches and I will gain from that. It's not wise to do anything against God because he thinks that by doing that he can get some people. So he's serving God but not the right motives. So he's not obeying God. That's why Jesus said there are some people who preach gospel who cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. I hope he can repent and go to heaven. Okay, and number six, to serve God. Serve God. The fruit of salvation, to serve God. In Matthew 25, the last two parables. The second parable is about the three servants with the five talents, two talents, and one talent. And then the five talents, the servant with the five talents and two talents, they earn five talents and two talents. And the master said, you're a good and faithful servant. Come and enjoy the happiness of your master. But the third servant, bury one talent and did not do anything with that. And he was cast out into darkness and gnashing his teeth. Is that heaven? Is that heaven? Darkness gnashing the teeth? That is not heaven. And also the third parable, the sheep and the goats. The sheep has done these little things to the little ones. But the goats have not done this thing to the little ones. And then the sheep will go to where? Eternal life. And the goats will go to where? Eternal punishment. 
So this parable tells us that in Christian, they believe in Jesus, but they don't serve God at all. They can lose their salvation. But we don't get salvation by serving God. But you might say, how about the thief on the cross next to Jesus? You know, he served God when he glorified Jesus on the cross. He said, this man has done nothing bad, but we too deserve the punishment. And then he properly asked, asked Jesus, when your kingdom, kingdom come, remember me. So all this showed his life, and he glorified Jesus. That was his ministry. Serving God doesn't have to be serving in the prayer team, praise team, or preaching. Now, it would be good to serve God like this. But it can be anything that we bless people, care about people, tell them about Jesus, bring them to love God, all this. So if Christians do not have this fruit at all, they might have problem with their faith. The main thing is, whoever have Jesus and the Holy Spirit inside them, they will have salvation. But if they have Jesus inside them, they will change. And these six changes again are, the first two related to salvation. They will continue to repent and continue to trust in Jesus. Now these two are how we are saved. But he will continue to continue to repent and forsake the sin and trust in Jesus. Number three and four are relationship. That he will have relationship with God and also he will love God. And then number four are five and six related to action. Number five, to obey God. Number six, to serve God. So if people don't do that at all, they have the danger of not being born again. They have the danger of not being saved. But that's the last way to motivate people. You don't motivate people by saying you can go to hell. We don't, that's the last way. The best is to say, God really loves you. Have you experienced any good thing from God? Have you experienced any joy and peace and love and help from God? If you have, do you want to respond to God? Do you believe that God is in control of everything? I ask people, do you believe that God has every blessing in His hand? And He's the one who can give you blessings and hold back the blessings. You know, there are people who thought they can fight against God and they will suffer the consequences. Have you heard of the Titanic? Titanic? Some people said even God cannot sink the ship. So God sank the ship and showed them, I can sink that ship, any ship I can sink. Have you heard of the Chinese Kung Fu man, Bruce Lee? In his last movie, it's called The Game of Death. And he think he can play with death. And I, two weeks before he died, I saw him on television. I was in Hong Kong at that time. I saw him on television. And on television, he was very proud. When he talked, he looked up, he looked at people like this. And he said, you know, he said, someone said he used a, 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 a belt to threaten him. He said, I don't need that. I can, even when I touch your body with my fingertip and I, I punch you, I can send you far away. I don't need a weapon. He was very proud. And then two weeks later, he died. Very young. And there are many examples like that. That people thought they can fight against Almighty God. It's very foolish. Because God is so loving and so good. Now first think of the goodness. Think of the food you eat every day. Is the food delicious and wonderful? God has created so many kinds of food, each with a different taste. Let me ask you, all the cooks here, if I give you some material, can you make bananas? Can you make bananas from some material? Can you make, make mango or pineapple or shrimp? But all these have the distinct taste, right? Do you like the taste? And even water. Do you like water? Yes. Even when we drink water, does it taste good? Wow. Ooh. It soothes the throat, right? Wonderful. Isn't God wonderful? I want to tell you, 
I look at God in every way. I look at his creation. Now there are five ways you can see God's love. We can write this down. Five areas we can see God's love. First area, creation. Creation. From the food, from our body, from nature, we can see God's love. We can see even animals have love. People have love, have feelings, because God has feelings. Number two, from Jesus' redemption, how he died on the cross for our sins, we can see God's love. Number three, from the Bible, it tells us how God loves us. Number four, when we pray, we can experience his peace and love and joy. Have you experienced that? So we can experience him when we praise him and pray to him and trust in him. Number four, in daily life. Have you experienced help in daily life? Yes. When you have a problem, you ask God for help and he help you? Yes. So in these five areas, every day I look at the blessings of God. Everything we have is from God. So if God is so wonderful, do you appreciate God? No. Do you like God? Is anyone like God? Is anyone good like God? Listen to the question again. Is anyone as good as God? There is no one like God at all. Even your mother, your father cannot match up to God. So if God is so wonderful, can we really love Him? Yes. Say it again. Number three, number three. If I win. Number three is the Bible. Number four is we can experience Him when we pray to Him and worship Him. Number five is in our daily life, in our difficulties, we can experience His help. Do you agree? Yes. Do you like God? I tell you, I'm in love with God. <laughs> I really like God. There is no one like Him. I like God so much. I'm willing to die for Him. I don't mind. Because everything I do for Him, He remembers and He rewards. There is nothing we do for Him that He won't remember. He's the best. If we run away from Him, we have nothing. Our breath came from Him. Without Him, we have no breath. We have no life. That's why, when we think how good God is, if you listen to me, if you stay with me a little while, you can see that I talk about God all the time. I can see God in the wood, the wood He created, the water He created, our body, our mind, everything. The Holy Spirit, everything is so wonderful. Okay, any more questions? Okay, now I'm going to go into... Yes, go ahead. Please come forward. Now, if you have a question, please ask quickly. You always talk about motivating people when you make mistake. When? When you make mistake, motivating people. Yeah, I, I hear that, but then after that, what? Like, for instance, making errors, making mistakes. For instance, we said the first teachings on the passive school 20 and the next the school system, you appreciate them, you motivate them. Um, if they have sinned, then I will tell them. Repent and God is very happy with you. Okay. I do tell them to repent. Okay. And my question is this. Does God get angry with us? God. Does God get angry with us? No. Okay. I'll answer this. Okay. Because I got the question one. Okay. 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 <coughs> when the Bible talks about God's anger with people, is God's anger with people who don't repent. Now, you notice that Israel has sinned against God. And God told them many times, you repent, I'll give it back to you, I'll bless you. But they don't repent. And then the anger of God came. Now you notice, 
Peter was about to deny Jesus three times. But Jesus was not angry with him. Jesus said, I pray for you that you will not lose your faith. Amen. And when you turn back, strengthen your brother. So when people are really repentant, God doesn't get angry with us. But there are consequences of sin. For instance, you fight with your husband or wife. It will affect your family. It will affect your ministry. It will affect your, your peace. And, and then if we don't work on it, we don't, it's not just repenting, it's working on it. How, now I will talk about that too, marriage counseling. How to build up marriage. So, how can we build up the relationship with the husband and wife so that there is no fighting? Because the sin will have consequence. Now, is there any anger of God? There is, no, there is degree, a certain degree of anger of God. For instance, David, he committed adultery and he killed Uri Urias. And then, God was not pleased with that. God punished David. So there was anger. But the anger was not everlasting. And God continued to bless David. So there was degree, a degree of anger. But when we repent, God is very happy. But if people just keep saying, oh, I've sinned, I've sinned, I've sinned, and they keep looking at the sin and they, they fear, they're afraid, then they have no strength. And the Bible does say God will forgive. So we emphasize on that. But if they repent and then they don't change, then we'll tell them, we'll warn them, this is serious. If you don't change, there will be consequences. He said, go up, go angry with David, and he told, and they repent, but his, his anger was not, um, same same, same. Uh, They were punished. It was they not were. everlasting, right? But I'll, I also have a problem with this, when God cursed Adam and Eve, and up till now, we are still going through those punishment wires. The sin of Adam and Eve, what happened is, it caused all mankind to lose that perfection when God created us. It's not just the punishment, it's the consequence. Because then all people do not have this perfection that was created by God. Because of this imperfection, so we all cannot be connected to God and then Naturally, we are not connected to God. And so, when we are not connected to God, then there are consequences. So these are consequences. Consequences of Adam's sin. That all mankind, all babies born, have the sinful nature. But God wants to bless us. God loves us. He wants to bless us. Okay, any more questions? Yes? Please come forward quickly. Anyone who has a question, it's better that you come forward and and wait for the mic. Yes. How does one get more than like this? Go on your side, on your side. Say it again. How does one get more than better by grace? How to be? Yeah. How does one get more than better by grace? Okay, very good. Very good. Okay. Okay, good. Now, he wants to be motivated by grace. Let me tell you the degree, how the steps, the step, write this down. First step, knowing God's love. No. From the Bible you can see, from nature you can see, no, God's love. First, no. Second, believe. Believe that He really loves us, even in the midst of our difficulty. I know some of you have financial difficulty, but don't blame God on that. Don't blame God for your sicknesses or any problem. Believe that God is trying to help you. God is trying to help you. And if you all love God and obey Him in every way, blessings will come to this life, to Liberia. When we all follow God and obey God, you know, as in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, it says that, when my people who are called by my name, they repent, and they call upon, they call upon my name and seek my presence, and turn away from the sinful ways, I will hear them from heaven, 
and I will forgive the sins, and I will heal the land. So the Bible does talk about healing the land. So if we all obey God and love God and trust in His love all the time, His blessings will come more and more and more. So second is belief. The third is believe even in difficulties. Now some people believe. Right now you believe. How about when you lose your job? How about if you lose your ministry? Do you still believe that God loves you? Now many people blame God for these problems. Let me ask you, if there is some problem of your church member with you, is it because God doesn't love you or is it a problem of people? If you have fights with your husband or wife, is it a problem of people or is it from God? People. It's people. God loves you. God wants to bless you. It's because people's problem that we suffer. So when we suffer, don't blame God. But continue trusting God. Let me tell you, I have gone through difficult times myself. My teaching all came from my own real experiences. I have times that I lost my ministry. I have times that I was in shortage of money. I have times of diff different difficulties. But when I continue trusting God, God finally opened the way. And there were 10 years after I experienced the Holy Spirit. God still put me in... God let me stay in difficulties. But in those 10 years, I learned to trust in God and not to be affected by people and I continue to have this joy and the love of God. Amen. And then after that, God gave me all this teaching, how to handle different problems. So number three, trust in God's love even in difficulties. Number four, experience God's love. We can experience God's love by loving God more, praising God more, worshiping more. And when you experience the peace, how many of you experience the peace or the joy when you praise God? Can you raise your hand? How many of you experience the peace or the joy of the Lord when you praise Him? Could you raise your hand high up? Okay, thank God. Now, think of this experience as God's expression of love. Look at me. So when you praise God, hallelujah, and the joy comes. And then you say, this is because God loves me. His joy comes to me. It's because of God loves me. His peace comes to me. So every experience from God, we say it comes from God's love. You understand this? So every time you praise God, hallelujah, ha, 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 and you experience the joy, you say it's because of God's love. Okay? So number four, experience God. Number five, enjoy God's love. Enjoy God's love. Do you enjoy food? Do you enjoy food? Yes, sir. Do you enjoy sleep? Yes, sir. When you sleep, do you enjoy? Yes, sir. It's enjoyable to sleep, right? Yes, sir. Do you want to sleep now? <laughs> no. Now, all these things came from God. But can we enjoy God Himself? When you love God, you can experience His love. Can you ex enjoy God when He brings you love and joy and peace? Yes. Can you say, God, look at me now, please. Oh, God, I can enjoy you now. I can live in your love now. Oh, it's so enjoyable. Do you find enjoying God, enjoying God's presence more enjoyable than sleeping? Which is more enjoyable? The joy of the Lord, the love of God, or sleeping, or eating. So with the more you enjoy God, the more you say, God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. When you sing, can you sing like this? Watch me. God is so good. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. God is so wonderful. Uh, when I love 
love God like that, His joy and His love would just flow through me. Oh, the more you learn to enjoy God, the more you'll be filled with the love of God. The more you feel, you feel the love of God, the more the love of God will come out. And you know, just so far, when I talk about God, I'm so excited, so happy. So when you hear me talk like that, does it motivate you to have the close relationship with God? Rather than say, if you don't obey God, God is going to punish you. God is going to do bad things to you if you don't obey God. Or is it better to say, God has this everlasting love. This everlasting love. Oh, His loving kindness is better than life. His loving kindness is better than life. Is His loving kindness better than life? So the more we experience Him and enjoy Him, the more we'll be motivated by love. And the sixth level is motivated by God's love to bless people. And then when we're motivated by God's love to bless people, you see more people change, and you have more motivation. Let me ask you, are you changed at least a little bit this morning? Yes. Are you changed at least a little bit? Yes. You feel more relaxed. Yes. You like God more, right? Yes. So I hope that you can live like that. When Jesus come on earth, you notice how He speaks to the people, except to the Pharisees who don't repent. When he speaks to the people, does he say, if you don't obey God, God is going to punish you? Does he talk like that? He said, before you pray, in Matthew chapter 6, before you pray, God already knows your needs. And also, they look at a sparrow and a lily. God already provides for them. So he provides for you. So Jesus motivates us to trust God by telling us about God's nature. His blessings, His grace, to motivate people to follow God. Hallelujah. Yes, come forward. If you have a question, come forward quickly, please. Oh, your loving kindness is better than life. Yes, you have teaching on love and motivation. I want to know, is it good for a man of God to care somebody? to test you know, when a person provoke you and you want know, to reach the world is it good to test somebody as a man of God? Hmm. let me tell you we always want to try to bless but there are times that we have to announce uh, warning to people even when people don't repent we want to say repent God wants have all these blessings ready for you. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you in many ways. And then, if He doesn't repent, we can say, you know, you can face the punishment of God. But generally, for people who don't believe in Jesus, I don't cast curse. It's people who attack God, who attack the church, yes. attack Christians or the pastors. And I will tell them, what you're doing, you know, God is real. When you're attacking God and His people, you're sinning against God, and you're doing it intentionally, it can bring curses to you. And it's only in the last moment I'll say, you know, God can curse you. Be very careful. I still will say, God can curse you. I won't say, God is cursing you now. I, I don't want to say that. I don't want to declare that condemnation, because it's very heavy. Only when people really attack, even one day when I'm being persecuted, if I'm, I will, if I will be put to death by some people, I still will not say God curses you. I will still say, be very careful what you do, what you do, because God is real, and I'm following God. And when you kill me, it can bring punishment and curses to you. It can bring curses to you. But I won't say, I curse you now. I, you know, I, that's something I will hold back. Unless in the worst situation. I, I don't know what the worst situation would be. Yes. Yeah, uh, are you speaking from your own perspective? 
Because in the book of Second King, chapter 2, verse 23, where in the children of the book, Elijah, and he cursed those children. Was there more? In Second King 2, verse 23. Elijah, Old Testament. Second Kings. Second Kings. Second Kings. Yes, two. Because he said, you, you don't curse. When you is not me, they are pastor, they are prophet. Okay. So, what Elijah did, and he was a prophet. Was it wrong or it was right? Okay. Now, let me tell you. The Old Testament, the book of Galatians has said, the Old Testament is like a teaching of childhood, for childhood. Waiting for the time of maturity in Jesus Christ. And then, when some people disobey Jesus, they ask Jesus, should I ask for fire to burn on them? And Jesus said, no, I did not come to condemn. So, uh, in the New Testament, now the Bible does have, for instance, um, uh, Ananias and Sapphira, they were killed instantly by God. But God has, now God is warning in uh, Revelation to the seven churches. There are warnings and there are also appreciation. But God there did not announce curses on them. So, uh, now, but then in the book of Revelation, there are curses on Satan and, you know, the, uh, on Satan's and the evil spirit. But then, that's something I will hold back on. Uh, because in Old, Old Testament time, it's not everything we follow. Because at that time, it's a time of punishment. In the Old Testament, Eli uh, Elisha did pray some people who mocked him and then they were killed. So in, in Old Testament it didn't happen. But that's like a time of teaching. A teaching of the law. Old Testament does have the gospel also. Because it does have forgiveness too. But then there was a lot of teaching on the law in the Old Testament. So I, for personally I disagree with uh, cursing someone. 